drum roll. So welcome back. This is a bed build this time for our van. It is the bed lift. And of course, in matte style, if you didn't go watch the one in the minivan, I'll list the description below of all. So when we posted that one, the bed was already built. And I had Matt go back and kind of walk you through it on how we built it because we had so many questions on that build that he went back and tried to show it. And this time you are you get to actually see Matt think through the whole process because it is a custom bed lift. Nobody's done it. I am this and it works. It works. The I mean, I have no doubt Matt pretty much makes everything work. Also, if Matt makes something, it's not it doesn't break. So, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. This is a little bit longer, but this is kind of the thought process that was going through his head. As we said before in our minivan build, there are no blueprints because it is a custom build. It's, it's custom fit. So you have to kind of go through the aches and pains of making something fit and see if it works. This did take a couple of weekends um, and he worked even nights after work. Yeah, this was a little process, but he got it done and successful and it does work and it sleeps well. We did use it already on one trip. If you didn't see the catch up vlog, we did take it on a trip to Texas and it does work. It worked out perfectly and I know we're going to enjoy it more and more in the future. So I'm not going to talk anymore. Here you go. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Christine's channel. We're starting the next phase of the van build. In particular, we're starting the bed. This is going to be the most complicated part of the whole process. And the one part that I'm actually not sure if it's gonna work the way we want it to. We wanna have an elevated bed. We've made mention of that before. And that bed is gonna go over the L couch here up in the front. We've seen plenty of vans with the bed in the back that comes up and down and they make a number of systems for that. Now, Happy Jack is one of them. There's one out of Europe that I really couldn't find a uh, retailer for in the US, but you could probably have it imported here. I've seen them with different pulleys and cables and uh, a number of different things. The problem with a lot of those is they're a set size. The Happy Jack is uh, basically a platform and it's set in its size. I think you can adjust either length or width depending on which way you turn it, but you can't adjust it much more than that. Because we want to put ours in the front and the couch goes underneath it, it can't be then mounted to the floor. It's got to be mounted to the side somehow. So again, I couldn't find something that would work perfect for that. So we're going to build something instead. Because of that, it's 100% custom. I've never seen anybody do it. And I don't have any other reference than just what's in my own mind, which sometimes is terrifying on its own. What we're going to use is linear actuators. I bought four of these linear actuators. And here's the linear actuator here. They are DC 12 volt. They are tall enough that when I mount it up to the top here, they will be able to get all the way down to where we're gonna mount, uh, where we need the bed to go down to. The bed itself, when it comes down, because there's a cabinet here and a cabinet here, will actually sit over top of the cabinets. It won't come all the way down to the couch height, but it'll sit over top of the cabinets. And then when it's done, it'll raise up which cuts out into our headroom, but we're short enough we'll fit. I calculate how it will have right about six foot, maybe five foot 11 when we're all said and done, but that's still pretty good headroom, even though it's under the main living space. So that's what we're gonna start now, is trying to figure out how to mount these, getting them square in reference to then the van itself, also to the bed frame itself, is going to be critical because as these move up and down, obviously that has to stay square. The way these work actually is this is a screw type of actuator. So there is a just a screw in here and as it rotates then the carrier then gets pushed up and down. The advantage of that is that it's very strong, holds a lot of weight and is stable. Once you cut the power, there's really no slippage that won't go down unless the screw inside rotates. If it doesn't rotate, this won't move. So again, it becomes a very stable platform and can carry a good bit of weight. The, these were 250 pound actuators each. And with that, that's about a thousand pounds. The bed itself, the frame, the mattress shouldn't weigh much more than 60 pounds, meaning we should have an extra 800 pounds at least that we could put on there. And I don't think we're gonna end up having 800 pounds on the bed. And also the 800 pounds won't be when it's moving. The bed itself will move, it'll just be 800 pounds stationary. And because one end's gonna rest onto the 
countertop, it still only takes half of that weight, which then means that you know we should easily be able to support the weight on these actuators. One of the other drawbacks actually to using the actuators like this is each one is individually wired, so you have to have four switches. We could use an actuator or some sort of relay to try to move them all at the same time, but I'm not sure if they will all have the same speed motors, so whether they'll go up and down at the same speed. Again, even if they're off by a little bit over time, that would get make it uneven, which wouldn't then work the way we want. So we will have to have four switches that you push at once and for up and down, but it also gives us some flexibility in that when we're on an incline, we will have some ability to tilt it one way or the other. Because the actuator is going to be fixed, or yeah, because the linear actuator part of it is going to be fixed, there won't be much movement back and forth, so, but we could tilt it a little bit if we need to. So that's the idea. We're going to start on that now by mounting these, squaring them all up, and then building a frame for the bed. Put the frame in here and see what we get from there. All right, what I'm going to do to mount these here is I'm going to use a couple plus nuts and put them into the wall here, and that's what the top will mount with. You can see the top of this. It just has a couple of mounting holes. It has four, depending on where you're going to use put it, but I'm going to use the top two because they're a little oval, so I have some adjustment then with that. I need to then work on getting this aligned so it is vertical compared to the floor, and then I'll use some washers behind it to adjust the angle to get it square with then the L couch, which will then in turn get it square with the bed. So that's what we're going to work on now, getting it leveled, marked up, some plus nuts in. So with the smart level again, we use that to line this up. I have put one plus nut in now, and then I've marked now with by leveling this out both in all three axes, vertically, horizontally, and parallel with the bench here itself. Same. Now I'm going to put in the next plus nut where that's marked, and I will use washers then to level this out. And here's what I did then on the bottom. The mount itself for the motor is there's a you know groove in that. So I used a piece of steel here that would fit in that groove pushed it back and forth by mounting it with an L angle here. Then I could move it back and forth this way to where I could get this then level again with the bench here and with the floor. Then, because it would slide back and forth, I used it this way, moved it on the slot back and forth until we got it level. Then I could drill through and mount it. I then added these two braces and then what I'm going to do is actually drill through from one side to the next through both pieces of aluminum and the piece of steel in two spots, one on each side, and that'll give it a little more structure as far as holding the weight then that this will bear down. It'll spread it out to the beams across here. So that's what we have. That's how we got it to line up and square up nice. Working on the rear actuator. Mounts the same at the top with plus nuts and then down here at the bottom again we have an area where we knew it would go. What I've done then is is made again a similar mount that I can move it adjust it backwards and forwards this way to adjust this part of it and then these will then mount to the bottom here so I can adjust it front to back. So now we're going to line it up and get it perfectly aligned with the other ones. That's one more done. Okay, we have all four of the posts in for the bed lift. I had measured out in the beginning about how wide that would be. And with the distance of the post there, we could fit 54 inch bed in there, which is a full size bed. If you actually mounted the frame outwards a little bit more, which would only be possible if you moved it down, you might be able to get a queen size bed in there, but you'd have to figure out a way to put those lower. I knew they would be about bench height, that's why I ordered this length, which happens to be the longest they make. 
Now this one here, that is temporary. It is just there because we don't have a cabinet built here to mount it with, but it's temporary. And then I've got them wired. I ran for this one here through the wall, out the wall across my floor opening, back up in into the bench itself. These other ones we ran down this wall here and then down with that bundle there into the bench itself where all the electrical connectors are here. Now one of the things that did have to change is this used to be hinged, this one here, but because of where that sits it's not really that functional if I hinge it anymore. Since I shouldn't have to get in here very often, we'll just make this so it just can be removed and set back into place. And the problem with hinging it again is if I put another bar in here, which is what I'd have to do to put to make it fit to hinge, then the bottom part, which flips up to expose the batteries, would not work anymore. I did add a separate little fuse block. I'm going to use that specifically for the bed lifts, so I have those set separately so I know right where they are. And now wiring wise, we're using a double pull, double throw momentary switch. And this allows them then to move upwards and downwards depending then on which way the switch is thrown. Right now, I don't have four switches. I've ordered two more. Only we ordered four, two came in. So we've wired it with this jumble because that way we can run both of them at the same time and run the back and the front just to get us set up so we can get the bed frame in. I've also left this extra long because we're not sure where the switches are going to end up here once the cabinets are in place. They're going to be up here somewhere. The refrigerator is going to be right in here. There'll be a panel up here for them, but we're not sure exactly where. So I left plenty of wire. These can be trimmed down to make it fit. Now we've got to put together a bed frame. Once we get the bed frame built, we're going to put it in here and figure out how to mount it. Today we're working on another part of the van. In particular, we're starting on the frame for the bed. So we're gonna build a frame out of extruded aluminum. That frame then will hold the mattress and then be connected to the actuators, the linear actuators we're using for lifts. I started cutting and tapping the extruded aluminum parts that we're gonna use. And there's a little difference this time. So if you see here, we're using one by two extruded aluminum instead. We're tapping in the ends here. And that's so we can adjoin it to the other one by two. You'll see as we're putting it together how that's going to turn out. But one of the things that did happen and one of the problems with using this type of construction or this type of fastening of these, instead of using just all uh, braces and all corner joints, things that fall into the grooves, with tapping and inserting, you risk run the risk of breaking off a tap. And that's what I did. I forgot which one. And that's what I did in this one here. I'm not sure, but ever since I started using the one by two piece here, I don't know if their extrusion or the die that they extrude this through is getting worn down or a little different, but the tapping into here was tighter than it ever has been on any of the other ones. Because of that, you could tell there was just a lot more friction and it was much more difficult to tap. The tap itself was older. I've used it now a number of times, so I wasn't sure if that was the issue, but when I got it in there, it ended up then galling and breaking the tap off. So this piece, this tap here will not be able to be used. You're not gonna be able to fasten that. You're not gonna be able to get the tap out of there. The tap is tougher than the material surrounding it. So this piece still can be used, but it must be attached different ways or cut down and used in a different part of the project. So the, the piece is not ruined, but that part of it will not be able to be threaded and tapped and used like I want. So cut another piece and tap it out. As I started tapping the next pieces, the same thing. The, it feels tighter than what I would normally expect. There's a lot more resistance in putting the tap in. Because of that, what I'm gonna do now is, I haven't had to before drill, pre-drill the holes before I tap them, but I'm gonna do that. That way we make sure the tapping goes smoothly and I don't break off another bit. This is part of the bed frame. This is gonna be one of the outside tubes. And our normal, basically, holes to mount to the other side, counter sunk into this side so we can put then a flat cap screw. But this, this piece here is going to get added then 
onto the bottom here and that's what the plywood to make that the mattress is going to sit on is going to go into. One of the things you can do is take the nutserts here and preload them into into the slots. Sorry, one of the things you can do is take the nutserts here and preload them into the slots. But on a long piece like this, trying to line them up then becomes difficult. Also, then can preload them onto the part you're putting or the part you're putting in, and then slide it all together. This sometimes becomes a little difficult with a long piece like this, but with some patience, you can usually thread it in there nicely. And to me, I find it easier than trying to preload and find the openings for each of these down the slot. Here's the bed frame in place. It's not mounted yet, but it's in where it should go. The actu actuators all work. Now we're going to start working on mounting it. So these are the mounts we came up then with for the actuators to the bed frame. To so the bed frame here. We made the bed frame exactly the width between the two actuators for the front, which is 54 inches, meaning we can fit a full-size bed in there. This, because it fits tightly now, we just used a piece of aluminum angle, bolted through through the bed frame, and then this actual actuator had us three uh, places to mount, two 6 millimeter and one 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. We use the 10 millimeter so that way there's some flexibility here so as the as it gets out of alignment this can then twist just with one mount. The other side here same thing except for these two bolt all the way through into the long one going across there that crossbar. Now the back because the back is wider here the actuators are further away had to actually mount these off a little bit so again, use some extruded aluminum, one by two, bolted it through here into the threaded part here, and then same thing, use the 10 millimeters into there. So that's how we ended up mounting it. It actually works out pretty well. So then there's four switches here, and then give them all a push, and it moves up. Because they run at different speeds, this one tends to lag behind a little bit. Every once in a while you have to give it a second and again re-level it and then run it again. And here are the switches. We have four switches. Again, they're just here temporarily, so all that is excess because we don't know where they're going to end up at. But there's four switches. Pushing them all four at the same time runs the actuators together. And it lowers the lift down. It's actually quite a bit quicker than I thought it would be. That's about where it's going to come down to is here because it's going to sit on top of the countertop that is under here and then there's countertop that's going to be on that side. We'll have a little step so we can get up onto the bed. And then same thing. It goes back up. Because some of these run at different speeds, there are times where one will lag a little bit. So you have to stop for a moment and then catch the other two up. These two right side ones tend to lag. I don't know if that's because they have the longer connections for the wires, but they tend to lag a little bit. Actually, mainly going up, not as much going down. But now you can see with the clearance here, we actually have to the bottom of this, we have five foot 11 inches. Of clearance so it is obviously taking up some of the headroom for us because of the size we are that's just fine so if it's too short it might not be for everybody now there is a little extra room here that if these mounts were made differently these mount this could be pushed up probably another inch you probably could gain a full six foot which is what I calculated we could get but right now we're at 
five foot eleven. Sorry the lighting's a little harsh, but the way the van is lit right now, because of the bed just putting in, we haven't reorganized all the lights yet, but I wanted to get this out because the bed is actually done. It's done as far as we're gonna go now. It's not finished 100%. We still have obviously the finish to do. We're going to put the finish on here. This will get the same material that the ceiling will get, but we're not ready to start that yet. So this is gonna stay just like it is. Everything else though is done. The bed functions. The switches aren't quite where they're gonna be permanently because again, they're gonna go in a cabinet here and we're not done with that yet. So we still have some things to finish, but the functioning of the bed works. There you have it. Now we have a bed. This is about how far down it's gonna go. It does go down further, but we'll eventually have a cabinet under here and a little cabinet under there. So this is all the farther it goes down, which gives us still plenty of headroom. We'll have a little step down here to get up onto it, but it came out very nice. It works very well. It was worth all the effort. It took a lot of time. Obviously with a custom build, this is something I've never seen anyone do before. It just made sense to me to try to make it the way we wanted it because then we can get the exact size bed we want we can put the post where we want it and it's worked out nice and then it goes away gives us full access to the l couch below there we like the l couch design in the front because it gives us a rear bathroom the rear bathroom i think is nice because it doesn't take up the space when this is out of the way this has such a big open area in the bottom of it, it has a really nice open feel in there which gives you extra space it's airy it works out very well a lot of under couch storage all the things that we want it to be for us it was important to make it work that way some of the bed kits out there there are raised beds that you can buy but they didn't quite fit the way we want them to because they're one size fits all you have to make them you know work with the post that you come with and they just didn't fit in the location we wanted it to so overall, very happy with the way it came out. The mattress itself is actually comfortable. It's four inches thick. It's a stiff foam mattress. You don't actually hit down all the way to the plywood. It makes for a very firm mattress, which we like. If you wanted a plusher mattress, you obviously could get softer mattress. I've thought about putting one inch of foam on the bottom. There is actually just a little bit of room left. So I probably could put one inch of foam on the bottom of the mattress on top of the plywood. That would give it a little extra cushion. So it's a two stage or two layer mattress. But we'll see how this works out first before we decide that. Well, hopefully you got something out of this uh, bed build. Again, it was definitely a chore to line up all the uh, actuators. We spent a lot of time getting that set up just right to get the bed built so it fits the between the actuators just right. Obviously, a lot of precision to that and a lot of time spent, a lot of cutting and recutting, measuring, and you know, just getting it done. It, I think it was worth it in the long run, though. I'm very happy with the way this turned out. All right, thank you.